Hello and welcome back to Adventure Planet, where today I'm back here at Thorpe Park for the start of the 2023 season. Oh, I do like getting back to Thorpe Park, home of some of my favourite coasters here in the UK, including the Swarm and of course Stealth. Today we're going to be taking a look around the park, checking out all the updates for the 2023 season, including the new merch as well, riding on some of my favourite rides as well as checking out some of the construction work currently taking place at Project. Project Exodus. Now obviously construction and landscaping has been going at quite a pace recently over the past few weeks. That section of Old Town is now completely levelled. It's a Sunday today, not expecting anything too exciting to be happening today or even over the next few weeks actually. So we'll be covering that more when the track starts going into place. However, I'll take a look from inside the park today, share what I can with you and just see what that section of Old Town looks like uh, as of today. Uh, not the best day for it in terms of weather. It's a little bit drizzly it's been throwing it down this morning however we'll see how many rides we can get on see what the queue times are like and uh, try and enjoy the day as best as we can let's head on over to the island like no other park hours today 10 a.m through until 5 let's go and here we go then heading across the bridge to the island like no other oh what a great skyline but a soar over there of course this will be changing a lot come next year when we see the towering Project Exodus in the background. That ride really is going to be absolutely huge. And you will most definitely see it from this bridge. And here we go. Beautiful views across the lake as always. Oh yeah, always great to be back at Thorpe Park. Scream louder. It is a pretty quiet day today. It is a Sunday, like I say. Uh, but because of the weather, I'm expecting it to be... Uh, yeah, pretty pretty quiet today. Shark cabins over the back here. Love the look of that shark. Fantastic. Worth noting that for two people, you're looking at about £159 to stay in there uh, for this season. And for that money, you get a two-day park entrance ticket and uh, free breakfast, free Wi-Fi, free parking, and a really unique little cabin to stay in as well. I've stayed there once before, and it is really, really cool. So worth doing if you've uh, if you've not done that before and to get access you just head down this pathway here and this takes you to the Thorpe Shark Cabins that's where you'll find hotel reception just at the end of the main bridge here and here we are inside the dome then at base camp with the coffee shack vibes bar and kitchen the island shop which we'll be checking out the new merch a little bit later on huge mirror ball at the top there as well and of course just behind me here the huge extreme grabber where you can get some uh, Among Us merchandise. Yeah, they're great. <laughs> they got some little grabbers here as well for the smaller toys. Yeah, pretty busy at the coffee shack today. Like I say, with the rain coming down, a lot of people coming in to take shelter. However, it is easing off a little bit for the moment. May have spoken a little bit too early. It may be throwing it down again, but uh, yeah, there's the island shop there. Looking forward to seeing the new merch a little bit later on. Let's head on outside. And here we are then at the other side of the dome and it all is such a great skyline this, isn't it? Look at this. Although a little bit worried though, not seeing anything running at the moment. No swarm, no stealth, no detonator, no Nemesis Inferno. <laughs> Could be down due to the weather. We'll have a look when we get a little bit closer. Depth charge looking good there though as well. In terms of ride closures today, of course, yeah, tidal waves not open just here. That's all completely dry and, uh, like I say, obviously Colossus. And the app is also reporting that Vortex is closed again. That could be due to the wind. We're going to take a little look at that now. And after a little bit of downtime, Vortex, the KMG Afterburner, which opened here in 2001, has now just reopened. Absolutely love this area of the park, Lost City. Lots of flat rides here. Of course, you've got Rush. Off there in the back, you've got Zodiac just here, which is a Hus Enterprise. You've got Vortex, and you've also got Quantum just through here. Great section of the park for flat rides, and all of them receiving new signage, like this uh, Vortex sign here. All looking nice and fresh for the start of the 2023 season. Love a good KFG, KMG afterburner. KFG? <laughs> oh, KFG is. KMG afterburner. And uh, yeah, Vortex is one of the best ones.
and just had a great ride on Vortex then. Like I say, do love a good KMG afterburner and that one is pretty fantastic. Just heading towards uh, Rush now. I'm gonna have a quick ride on that today as well. And uh, yeah, as you can see here, Terminal's all gone. Last time I was here at Thorpe Park was obviously for Fright Nights. They don't have a Christmas event here, which is a little bit disappointing. I feel like they're kind of missing a trick there again this year. Same uh, events as last year. You have Mardi Gras, Carnival, uh, Oktoberfest and Fright Nights this year at Thorpe Park. So yeah, turn this into a little bit of a picnic area here as well. As you can see as we look across the lake here, they've actually moved the Thorpe Bell boat to uh, over here now. That's actually where uh, the old scare maze Saw Alive used to be. It used to be actually parked over here. They've actually moved it to this side of the lake now, which uh, I'm assuming has kind of freed that area uh, up quite a bit. So we'll take a look at that a little bit later on. Yeah, heading over to Rush now then, the Screaming Swing here at Thorpe Park. Swing of Screaming Swings. A new one has just opened up at Bush Gardens in Tampa, Florida called Serengeti Flyer. One of the fastest and tallest screaming swings in the world. And of course, we'll be in the US at the end of the year for Halloween. So we'll head to Bush Gardens and make sure we cover that right here on the channel. And up goes Zodiac again here as well. Still struggling to get completely vertical, that one. Uh, I guess it's showing its age a little bit now. Really, it's, it's a big shame that, you know, enterprises are so much better when they get that, you know, right up to vertical, so you go right over the top. But uh, yeah, that right there is about as far as Zodiac's going these days, which is a little bit of a shame. Anyway, let's head on to Rush and see how well this is riding. Let's go. And just come off my ride on Rush then. And it, yeah, it's one of the rides here uh, that is along with Zodiac actually, that seems to be struggling a little bit these days. Of course, it is quite old now, 2005 manufactured by s and And yeah, it's just kind of struggling to keep that height, you know, one or two full height swings there. And that was about it, which is a little bit of a shame. Um, heading down towards the uh, last remaining flat ride here in Lost City, which is Quantum again. Nice new signage there in the back. Uh, don't usually ride this one. However, this year, this ride is celebrating its 20th milestone birthday, along with Nemesis Inferno here as well, which we'll be taking a look at a little bit later on. So I'm gonna jump on this today. Literally no queue. It's just had a little bit of downtime, so just testing at the moment. And then I'm gonna jump on. Let's go. And into the Amityville area of the park now, and this is Storm Surge, the spinning rapids ride here. It looks as though they've tidied up a lot of this area around here. You can get quite close now and get some good views of people coming down the, uh, the final drop. Little double drop here. Hey! <laughs> it's quite a fun ride this, you don't get too wet on this one. Basically just a lift hill that goes to the top of this structure here, and then a bit of a spiral down and a double drop at the end. Into this little splash pool here. And then around to the side of the ride. Opened in 2011 this one, from Whitewater West. And just a quick look at Tidal Wave then, one of the wettest UK water rides, looking completely dry at the moment as it still undergoes its maintenance for the start of the new season. Shame this couldn't get ready for that very first day. However, yeah, as you can see, it is still down and uh, not much work from what I can see going on at the moment. Not sure when this will be open, hopefully soon, 
yeah, as at the moment, it is still completely dry. No water anywhere, to be honest. Uh, this, in terms of wetness, yeah, you do get pretty soaked on this ride. Actually, this is probably only really eclipsed by drenched at Oakwood Theme Park. Great ride this, though. Hopefully, it will be back up and running again really soon. And just as we approach the old Old Town section of the park, here is Colossus. And uh, yeah, looking in a little bit of a state at the moment, of course, as you can see, very much closed and not featuring its full 10 inversions. As there's absolutely no track going along here whatsoever. Now, the retrack for Colossus is quite interesting in the fact that they're not doing it all in one hit. It's kind of coming year by year. They're kind of retracking each section um, as the years go by. So not quite sure how long this project will take. Not being um, actually retracked by Intamin, who's the original manufacturer for this coaster, it's actually being done by the same company that done uh, the retrack for the big one. So not quite sure how long this is going to take or even when it's going to open at the start of this season. The ride itself actually is, uh, is looking pretty grubby, if I'm being perfectly honest. The track is looking pretty grubby. The supports are looking grubby. Of course, this opened back in 2002. So it is kind of showing its age a little bit now. It would be nice to, you know, see this given a little bit of TLC because um, it's going to look a little bit weird if it's got fresh, fresh new track all nicely painted up in here. And yet these supports and the rest of the track are left looking in the state that they are. Uh, of course, this opened back in 2002, so it is pretty old now. Uh, it was originally going to be a launch coaster, but instead they actually went for a multiple uh, inversion coaster instead. Really sad to kind of see it in this shape. Uh, this is a fantastic, pretty much massively underrated coaster here at the park. This was actually the original coaster that gave Thorpe Park that thrill title, obviously years ago. It used to be very much a family-friendly park. When I first came here, it was just kind of kiddie rides, kiddie coasters, and then this was kind of the first major project, if you like, that put Thorpe Park on the map of uh, thrill parks basically here in the UK. So it's a shame to see it kind of almost looking pr very neglected, really. I'd like to see some work getting done on this and hopefully it's back in operation really, really soon. And in terms of views of Project Exodus then, the construction site, this is going to be the best that you're going to get from actually inside the park off-ride. Uh, this is kind of, you know, sticking my camera through a hole in one of the uh, boarding fences here. If you do want a much better view of the construction site, I would recommend riding either Saw the Ride or the Samurai. Just got off my ride on the Samurai and i got to say, it does offer some pretty fantastic views over this site. As you can see though, it's completely flat now. What used to be this section of Old Town. There's a little bit of Logger's Leap remaining just at the back there, um, towards the back of the lake. Not quite sure if you can uh, pick that out or not here. But of course, this is, you know, all preparation for, of course, the UK's tallest roller coaster at 236 feet. It's going to be built by Mack Rides, so it will be a Mack Rides hypercoaster. And there's only three of those uh, in the world to this day. So the fact that we're getting the fourth one here in the UK is absolutely fantastic. Now, ground pins are already on site, but obviously early foundation work is still ongoing here. But yeah, that's all you're going to see from uh, the, literally the, the construction hoardings around the park. Like I say, better views will be had on Colossus as well once that has actually reopened. Oh, and it's going to be such an exciting time in terms of construction here at Thorpe Park with obviously the UK's newest, tallest coaster being built here, 236 feet, eclipsing the big one at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. And i got to say, I can remember when that was actually getting built, watching that get built in 1994. This is going to eclipse that one, which is going to be absolutely fantastic. Like I say, it's a bit of a dreary day today, so I'm not going to head around to Monk's Walk uh, and get some kind of closer construction footage. I imagine it's pretty messy around there at the moment however this when you know when the construction really starts ramping up we get those supports in the track gets delivered this is going to be one to watch it's going to be a real exciting time Whoa, 236 feet and talking of 236 feet Thought Park do actually have a little bit of a competition going um, called Club 236 which basically means whenever you visit the park between the 18th of March and the 31st of October you're basically put into a, uh, a ballot entry if you like and there's 
some uh, variety of prizes um, ranging from basically uh, first rides on Project Exodus um, to first in the queue line on the first day that the ride actually opens to the public. Uh, I'll drop the link in the description of this video for that if you do want to check out some more. Um, it's for Merlin pass holders and Thorpe Park uh, pass holders only, but take a look. I'll drop the link in the description and uh, yeah, get yourself in. The more times you visit, the more entries you get into that ballot, the higher your chances of getting the first ride on this when it's actually up and open. Cannot wait. Anyway, let's head to Saw the Ride and uh, see what the queue time's like over there. And some more views there then of the Project Exodus construction site. So just managed to get my camera lifted over one of the fences by Samurai. So hopefully that provided a little bit more of a view for you. Over at Saw the Ride now, and just to the left here, where Crows at Morkin Meadow used to be, and of course Saw Alive. This is all gated off currently. Just a quick look to see what they're doing here. I believe they're turning this into kind of a little bit of a picnic area. There's some work going on at the back here on the flooring by the looks of it. It looks a little bit messy, but it's actually quite a big area down here as well. As you know, if you did ever do kind of the crows at Morkin Meadow uh, and Saw Alive, you know full well how big that area is. So it'd be good to see uh, whatever it is that they actually do turn that into. If it is just kind of a little bit of an eatery, uh, there's actually quite a lot of space there that could be used. Over on Saw the Ride now then, there's a pretty hefty queue at the moment, 60 minutes for Saw the Ride. There is a single rider queue obviously for this though, so I'm going to try my luck on that and see how long I have to wait. Let's head on. And just come off my ride on Saw the Ride then, advertised queue time of 60 minutes, waited just 15 in the single rider line, which is fantastic. Also, kind of missed this, <laughs> this is some uh, old Saw Alive theming here that they've got got uh, whatever this is supposed to be I'm not quite sure I'm not I'm not up on my is it some kind of farmyard appliance I've, I've absolutely no idea is it a wind turbine absolutely no clue and they've also got the police car over the back as well which is uh, really cool to see yeah really really good ride on saw the ride all the effects working the blades are spinning out the front here as well and uh, yeah absolutely fantastic ride managed to get a front row so not as uncomfortable as it could have been however yeah good to see everything working and uh, yeah, nice healthy queue time as well. Like I say, really take advantage of that single rider uh, queue line if you are coming down here. Like I say, shaving 45 minutes off of the advertised queue time is fantastic. Great Gerslauer this, 100 degree drop. What a ride. Three hours into the day then, and yeah, it's not been the best day in terms of weather. As a matter of fact, it's starting to rain again now. However, I've got quite a few uh, rides in in those three short hours, and there's still plenty of the day left here as well. Um, saw the ride though, yeah, really impressed with that. Happy to see all the effects and stuff working on there. Um, talking of effects though, and effects that don't always work, of course, Walking Dead, the ride is one for those, hey, <laughs> is one for those that doesn't always work. So let's get on there and see just what is working on there today. Good thing about Walking Dead, the ride though, is they've now introduced a single rider queue. Um, this is one of those rides where actually, if you are kind of in a single rider or a three or a five, you don't always get let on you have to wait for you know another party to turn up with an odd number so it's good to see single riders is actually available on this ride now just a 10 minute wait let's head on in and see what's working on this ride and i tell you what thought park oh yeah there's some positives there with in terms of like the effects on rides like i say saw working great and yeah all the effects on the walking dead working great as well as a matter of fact it's been a long time since i've seen 100 percent of the effects working on that ride so that's really really good to see yeah good ride the single rider queue kind of still doesn't really work on that ride uh it's mainly kind of you know on quiet days like today because of the weather you're still kind of hanging around a little bit waiting for the you know the, the three or the five group of five you know um, so that you can actually sit on with them um, because of course you have to have two to a row on that ride before they can actually dispatch it so on busier days 
days, that will be obviously a lot better. However, on days like today, yeah, it still didn't work quite so well. I was still kind of hanging around for about 15 minutes before I actually got a ride on there. Um, heading over to Nemesis Inferno now, 20 years old this year. And of course, the only Nemesis in operation in the UK currently, what with the, uh, the original going through its uh, major retrack work. Let's head on, on, head on to Inferno. Hopefully this rain stops a little bit and uh, we can get a good ride on here. Let's head on. just had a fantastic ride on Nemesis Inferno then to celebrate its 20th birthday. What a ride that is and you know it may not have the same forces as the original Nemesis or the theming however I do still prefer the layout of Inferno. It's a fantastic really really good ride. Over here now at Rumba Rapids and here we are, one of the earliest remaining rides at Thorpe Park, opened in 1987. Not the best rapids in the UK, this. I still think that uh, that title goes to the rapids at Drayton Manor. However, it is a lot better than the Congo River Rapids at Alton Towers. Current queue time, 10 minutes. Oh, stealth is open, back in action after the little bit of a rain shower that we just had. We'll be getting on that a little bit later as well. Yeah, Rumba Rapids. And before we do head on down to Angry Birds Land then, one of the rides that has had a little bit of a re-theme this year is Storm in a Teacup. The 1986 Mac Rides Teacup Ride is now Doubles Tea Party. Got a new soundtrack, nice splash of paint here, nice purple theme. Yeah, probably long overdue a, uh, a little bit of a refurbishment slash re-theme this ride. Now Doubles Tea Party, a nice calming soundtrack. There is a more funkier version of the soundtrack as well. Yeah, good to see this getting a little bit of love. And we've got a 20 minute advertised queue time for Detonator here in Angry Birds Land. And they're definitely, <laughs> they're definitely teasing the riders today when they get to the top. Great drop tower that's manufactured by Fabry, opened here in 2001. And it might only be 115 feet tall. However, it packs some real intensity, this one. Dropping at speeds of 50 miles an hour. <laughs> Fantastic. And just in front of Detonator then you also have the Angry Birds 4D experience with shows throughout the day. The last show one hour before park closing. Also got King Pigs at Wild Hot Dodgems just over here as well. We also got the Thrill Makers in action over the back there. Just a little bit of entertainment going on throughout the park today. Some next level refreshment vending machines just there, next to Peckish. And yeah, King Pigs, Wild Hog Dodgems. Good Dodgems, this. Choose your car. King Pig or an Angry Bird. <laughs> Just in the queue line now for Black Mirror Labyrinth, currently a 10 minute wait and as you can see the old Sky Swat ride here 
slammer is actually still here as you can see just through this fence here you can see the cars the old queue line the carriage and of course the massive towers here for the ride are still very much in place still SBNO this ride they can't actually remove it I believe for environmental reasons I think they found some protected species of bird nest somewhere in this area so uh, this ride is still standing uh, shame really because this was a really really intense ride this really intense flat actually probably one of Thorpe Park's uh, most intense flat rides they've ever had so it's a shame to see it closed and just kind of left like this but it is still here and you can still see it in the Black Mirror Labyrinth queue line and here we are over at Stealth to 80 in 1.9 seconds what a ride this and swarm two of the best coasters not only on park at Thorpe Park but two of the very best coasters in the UK in my opinion 205 foot top and on stealth right up to the top and it's running well today as well about to get on my ride worth noting if rumors are to be believed stealth is actually due to get its own single rider queue as well in the coming months which is great to see really good to see parks now kind of bringing in these single rider queues especially for people like me who come down to parks quite often uh, on their own so this is really good to see really positive step yes let's get on see is the advertising hoardings for ghost train to find out more thoughtpark.com new for 2023 and yeah as you can see there's some uh, retheming that's gone out of here on the front it kind of made this look kind of more old if you like i suppose these kind of uh, weathered planks of wood at the back there the queue line seems to have been refreshed uh, and like I say, yeah, it's looking quite clean. Uh, I'm not sure how much more will actually change on the front here. Probably not very much. Like I say, obviously most of the changes will be going on on the inside. It's actually got a brand new storyline, live actors, multi-century effects. It sounds like it's gonna be a really, really solid experience. Really looking forward to riding this. And uh, just to the left here of what was Darren Brown's Ghost Train shop, we now have the Last Call Cafe and Shop. So uh, yeah, we'll go inside here and see uh, just how much it's changed. And a little bit of footage there then of the interior of the new cafe over by Ghost Train. And yeah, it's a nice, well-themed, nice and warm little coffee house. Actually houses Costa Coffee. And just to the right of it, uh, you can see what I assume will eventually be the shop for uh, Ghost Train when it eventually opens in a couple of months. Made my way down to the Flying Fish now then, this little uh, powered coaster here. And talking of milestones, it's this one's 40th birthday this year. Built all the way back in 1983. Little Power Coaster was known back then as Space Station Zero, which was an enclosed coaster here at the park. It was actually this park's first ever coaster. So for 40 years I thought, you know what, I've got to get on. So yeah, got to jump on this now. This is the Flying Fish and then I'm going to head over and take a look at some of the new merch for 2023 over at the Island Megasaur. And into the mega store now then just to check out the new merch for 2023 here at the park and yeah looking pretty good with these little blue bears 
<laughs> a little logo on his foot there. Some hats there as well. Some little key rings. I like the fact that they're doing, they've done away with kind of the Thought Park font here and they're just going for the logo, which is kind of nice. Kind of like that, yeah, again with the books here. Doesn't actually say Thought Park anymore. They're just going for this, uh, for the park's logo itself, which actually I kind of like. That is pretty cool. Some pretty high quality merch here as well. That's uh, nice and embroidered here on the uh, the hoodie. And again on this uh, this t-shirt here as well. Really nice, nice and embroidered again. Nothing on the back, but yeah, I really like that. 25 pounds for the shirt. That's uh, that's really cool. Might pick myself up one of those. Got some more magnets and stuff here as well. <laughs> yeah, he looks great. Yeah, again, really nice. Got a white version again here. That's pretty cool. Again, with the Thought Park embroidered on the side. That's pretty cool as well. £25. Got the new mug here as well. Thought Park on the inside. Yeah, kind of, uh, I like this new merch this year. This is good. Got the glass there as well with the logo on the front and Thought Park around the side. Yeah, really like that. Really cool. There's some uh, prices for the non-wearables there. Clothing price individually. Yeah, really nice. And you've got some of the old classic Thought Park mugs there as well. And your water bottles. And again, this isn't exactly new, but this is really nice as well. Again, nice and embroidered on there. Got your lanyards, your pin badges. Yeah, these are all really nice. Like the tidal wave one there. Got your 2023 Thought Park badge there as well. Quantum, Zodiac, all the, all the uh, flat rides of Lost City. Stealth, Nemesis Inferno. There's no Nemesis Inferno 20 badge, which is a little bit of a shame. That would have been nice. Got a little bit of a selection there as well. Vampire, Smiler on there as well. Some more magnets here. And then you've got your specific ride merch here as well, the Swarm and Colossus there. I've got to say, I really do like this stealth shirt here. Love the colour. And again, nice and embroidered. However, it looks like uh, it's very popular as it's only extra, extra large. £30 for that one though. Yeah, really nice. Got a little stealth badge on the sleeve here as well. Really, really like that. And here's some of that Nemesis Inferno 20th year celebration merchandise here with this nice t-shirt. Not embroidered, but still pretty cool for £20. And then at the bottom we've got the hoodie, which is embroidered for £40. It's not a zip hoodie, no zips anywhere on it, but it is still a nice piece of merch that. And then we've got the standard Nemesis Inferno hoodie just to the right here as well. Now I don't know if these are new, but this Nemesis Inferno mug is absolutely fantastic look at that that's great nice and embossed yeah it really really looks good that that's 15 pounds and i'll definitely be picking up one of those today for the collection really really nice yeah and on this side you've got some of your ride bears which are really cool 16 pounds for your colossus nemesis inferno stealth and swarm bears there and your standard Thought Park bear as well. But what I really like is this, 15 pounds for a stealth cushion. <laughs> I mean, that is great. I think that would, uh, that would take pride of place in my living room, that. It's gonna be an expensive day for me today. Here, There's a lot of good merch in stock this year at Thought Park. Worth coming in and checking it all out, both here at the Mega Store and in the Island Shop, just on exit to the park. Really, really good stuff this year. And just been into the island shop here at the park then where I did manage to get one of those stealth t-shirts. So worth noting that if it is out of stock at the mega store, it's worth checking the island shop as you exit the park as they may have it in stock there. So yeah, 30 pounds, picked myself up that t-shirt along with a mug and a few other bits and pieces as well. Back down at depth charge now then. And yeah, good to see that this has had a little bit of a repaint during the off season. And also just next to depth charge, right underneath base camp here, they've implemented this new quiet space, which is good to see. Just in case the busyness of the day starts to get to you after a while, you could take a nice five, 10 minute timeout in this new quiet space here, which is good to see. Good to see the parks implementing things like this. 
and uh, yeah that can be found right under base camp next to the uh, toilets guest services and first aid here and with just one hour to go until park close then i've decided to save the best till last and head over to swarm island just behind depth charge though that has a five minute advertised queue time we've got this new kind of seating slash picnic area which is nice to see looking nice and fresh yeah you've got the entrance just here just behind depth charge there yeah a nice little place to kind of just chill out have a bit of food and you can uh, sit there and watch people queuing for depth charge <laughs> or watch the flying fish whichever takes your fancy but i'm heading this way now towards the swarm and in my opinion the best coaster here at the park and actually one of my very favorite coasters in the uk icon is very close but i think this might just take it let's head on over Over on to Swarm Island now then, and oh, it's such a magically themed area, this part of the park. Look at this, absolutely fantastic. Blows me away every time I see it, <laughs> it's so good. But as we know, this is Swarm, the B&M wing coaster here at Thorpe Park, and since 2012, Thorpe Park has been able to hold the title of having the UK's only wing coaster. However, that will change on the 15th of May, of course, when Mandrel Mayhem opens up at Chessington World of Adventures, just a little bit further down the road, actually, from Thorpe Park. So, yeah, let's get uh, a few rides in on Swarm while they've still got that exclusivity. Absolutely fantastic ride, this. Really, really good. Some may argue that the layout is a little bit too short. However, I don't think that takes much away from this. It really is a fantastic coaster. And it's a 35 minute advertised queue time for the Swarm then. 1.4 meters minimum to ride this one. And if you do want to try out one of the seats for various comfort issues that you might have, there is a test seat just at the start of the queue line here. And just had my ride on the Swarm then. 35 minute advertised queue time, weighted nearly 70. Unfortunately, no fault of the park. Uh, the wind speed at the top of the lift hill for Swarm was too great and we actually experienced quite a bit of downtime. A lot of people left the queue, unfortunately. Uh, it's just one of those things, you know, safety's paramount with this type of stuff. If the wind speed is too high, it's simply the ride can't be dispatched. It really is as simple as that. However, yes, it is a little bit of a short layout i'm not going to argue with that it is quite short however it is a fantastic ride and as a package with the audio and the theming it's one of the best ride experiences here in the uk absolutely fantastic love the swarm anyway going to take a few more looks around the park now hey there she goes uh just putting a little bit more off-ride footage and then we'll be wrapping up today's vlog been a fantastic day
And with that then, that brings me to the end of another fantastic day here at Thorpe Park. Uh, it's, what can I say, it's been great to get back here. It always feels like you're away from Thorpe Park for quite a while because, like I said earlier, they don't have that Christmas event. So this park is, in effect, closed from the end of October right the way through till almost the end of March. So it does feel like quite a while when you do get back into this park. Um, but from what I've seen though, really, really positive changes being made around the park. Um, you know, like I say, the, the swarm has had a little bit of a repaint in the station area. Uh, you've got all the new signage on the flat rides in Lost City, which is really, really good to see. The effects and everything are all seem to be working on the rides, like Saw the Ride. Uh, Walking Dead was really impressive as well, all the effects working on that. So that's really, really good to see. Uh, the single rider queue for Walking Dead, really, really good to see those starting to get brought in. And like I say, hopefully we'll get one on Stealth as well within the next couple of months. The new merch as well for 2023 has been really, really good. Uh, it's been an expensive day for me today, uh, buying all that new merch. All really, really positive things to see. Uh, kind of down points, like I say, it's a little bit of a shame about Colossus and Tidal Wave. I like to see all rides open at the start of a season in a park. I feel like, especially with Thorpe Park, uh, you know, when you've been closed for so, so many months, I really feel like that extra work should get put in and you should have all your rides available on the first day of the season. I forgive Ghost Train, obviously, because that's a new ride, it's a new refurb, and that will come in the spring. Of course, again, a ride that I am really, really looking forward to getting on and seeing just how that has changed. Rush, I think, is starting to get a little bit tired now, perhaps starting to think maybe that's the, that ride's had its day here in the park, we'll see in the future. Um, but otherwise, operations have been quite good today. We're a little bit stung with the rain this morning um, and the wind uh, kind of later on this afternoon, um, which obviously caused the downtime on Swarm. But again, that's, that's no fault of the park. That is pure, purely from a safety perspective. If uh, the winds are too high or, you know, it's, it's heavy rain, especially uh, for stealth, for example, which is really quite uncomfortable in the rain, uh, then the ride simply cannot run. That's not a fault of the park or the staff. That is just one of those things. Um, otherwise, yeah, really, really positive day today at the park. Really, really looking forward to coming back and doing more visits over the course of the year. I'm um, seeing all the events, like I say, Mardi Gras, Carnival I will be experiencing this year after having missed it last year. Uh, and of course, Project Exodus. Uh, we will be taking a look at the construction of Project Exodus as it starts to ramp up and gets into those more kind of exciting stages. Um, as I said, I will drop the link for that uh, Club 236 uh, competition that's basically running um, for you to check out those entry requirements and the prizes that are up for grabs in relation to that ride. Very, very exciting stuff. It's going to be a great year for Thorpe Park, I feel, and an exciting year as well. But in terms of the next vlog coming up here on Adventure Planet, uh, next week I will be in Creeley, Creeley Resort in Devon. Now I'm looking forward to getting back there. I've not been to Creeley since 2015, so there's lots of changes to see, lots of changes to report on the channel as well as sooty land <laughs> which opened just last year and something that i've yet to experience so yeah really looking forward to getting back there in just a week's time that'll be the next uh, vlog coming up right here on adventure planet but for today though from thought park i want to thank you so much for watching and as always happy riding everybody i will see you in creep